everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Camilla Clarkhorn. I'm Z Garcia. Today we're going to tell you about a game that some of you are going to know whether you'll like it or not based on a description. Mm -hmm. Mission Control Critical Orbit. This is a 20-minute game because you and up to three other players, and by up to three other players, I mean you and three other players, it's two to four, but you should play four, should play four. Yes. Yeah. Um, are going to, in real time, fix your spaceship. You, it's a roll and write rescue game. That's what it's called here. And one person is stuck on the spaceship, and three players are trying to rescue them. How are you doing that? With math. Okay, not math. Roll and write. You'll, you'll see. Let's talk about victory conditions. One person is going to be the mission commander on Mercury 3, they're on the spaceship, and they're going to have to connect these different nodes to each other. Uh, the yellow to the yellow, the blue to the blue, and the green to the green. There's, at the beginning of the game, you'll pick one of these setups to go. And you're going to be connecting these by playing polyomino tiles in such a way that you will connect some of the same colors. So uh, that doesn't actually connect yet. But as the game goes by, you'll be able to unlock these nodes and move them in the same spot. So maybe then once I do this, I'll be able to figure out a way I can get that here and have the whole thing like this. You're going to be able to move these around. But the game is about getting these polyominoes. And you have a couple other things. That, first of all, you need to be able to unlock these to move them around. You need to get the tiles to be able to place them out here. And you notice this tile here is a little black dot. That means it needs to have a black valve on it. You'll need black and white valves to be able to get that. And then there's little red dots. That's oxygen. You can pick a certain number of oxygen that you have that you need to do. That's how difficult the game will be. So an easy game would be you need six oxygen total. And that's to keep you from doing things like, hey, I'll just put this here. You know, I'll unlock both of these, move them there, and then I'll just put a little tile in there that, you know, turns the corner. And that's really easy to do. And that's, you know, legitimate, but I'm not going to get my six little red oxygen dots that way. So that's how you win the game. How do you play? Well, that is with these three dice. The person playing Mercury 3 each turn is going to roll these dice. You're going to be starting a 20-minute timer, rolling the dice, and announcing the dice to everybody. Everybody together then is going to choose one of these dice comes to Mercury 3 and the other two go to everyone else. Mercury 3 is just going to be moving down one of these two valves on 1 to 3 or 4 to 6. If they get that valve to the bottom, they have a free valve. And every time they get here, they get a bonus. Cologne is going to be taking the numbers that are given. Let's say numbers 3 and 4 are given. So Cologne has to write a number adjacent to another number. So they could write a 4 here which means they would cross off four more in that column. And maybe they'll write the three here, which crosses off three in that column. If at any point you fill all the boxes and fill in all the things there, so this did it perfectly, a two would have done it, then you can check off one of these circles at the bottom. When you check off a certain number of circles, you'll check off a locked sign. And that means that the player who's playing Mercury can turn over the top card and they've now unlocked that node. Although there are a couple cards in the deck that don't unlock anything. As you fill in the numbers, sometimes you'll see a symbol for one of the other players, and that player gets a bonus. Begalaru here is going to write numbers down, again adjacent to other numbers, but you're trying to get different numbers in the columns and rows. So if every number in a column row is different, you can check off one of these. Once you check off four of these, then the mission Mercury 3 is going to be able to randomly pull a half node from this bag. When they get two half nodes of the same color, then they, they can exchange those for another node that they can use. Although there are red nodes in the bag that can cause them problems. Also, when you cover up someone's symbol, you will give that person a bonus. And as a quick aside, I should mention that when you fill in a row on the bottom ones, which take five different numbers, they can look in the bag and see which one they want. All right, let's take a look at Houston. Houston is also writing numbers down, and they have to write adjacent to another number here. So let's say they write a four and a two there, and they write another four here, and then another four here. Hey, look, I just made a T shape. So I'll cross those off, cross off one of these T shapes, and then the Mercury player will draw the top 
tile from a T-shaped pile that they have. J, L, T, Z, S are the different shapes, and they'll be able to use that. They, when they, they can rearrange on their board as much as they want. Now, I mentioned that when you do these other symbols here on the board, you get bonuses. Whenever you write a number and another symbol on the board, you give up that person a bonus. You announce it to them. And for each of these three boards, the Houston, Cologne, and Bengaluru, you simply can write a one to six following the legal rules of where you're supposed to go. If Mercury gets a bonus, and there are many ways for Mercury to get bonus, they have three different things they can do. They have a pile of these tiles, these polyominoes next to the board. They can turn over the top one, and now when they take a tile, they can take that face up one or the top one of the stack. They can pull a random half thing out of the bag, and if it's a color they don't like, they can chuck it out of the game. And they can draw the top two cards of this locked deck and decide put one on bottom and one back on top, allowing you to put the one on top for you to be able to use. As I showed you before, you need to have all three of these connected with all the nodes, if there are any on the pipes, open with these valves, and you need to have a certain number of oxygen. And you also need to do all that in 20 minutes. If you do that, everyone together wins the game. I should mention the game plays with four players, but there is a little AI deck included with the game in case you can't get four players. So you'll be drawing this and based on some numbers, um, different things will be happening, whether the AI is playing for Houston, Bengaluru, or Cologne. Well, I know that if I'm ever stuck on a spaceship, they yeah. will be using polyominoes to rescue me. That's how it's you done. You don't think so? That's how it's been done. I Look, I've seen the movie. It's actually his favorite, or in his top favorite movies, Apollo 13. Apollo 13, 13, baby, yes. That's how they did it in Apollo 13. No, but in Apollo That's 13, they did it. my grandparents did it. <laughs> That's how they'll do it in the future. Polyominoes, baby. No, they did get a bunch of people together to figure out how to get these people down. It was like they stuck them in a room and said, figure out how to do this. To make this peg that fit sense. in that hole. I remember that. That's a great scene. That scene, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what this is. So this is real time. Um, is it frenetic? No, I think as in the spectrum of real time, it's closer to like escape for example where it's you have 20 minutes to take care of this and so like that frenetic is kind of you putting that pressure on yourself because in the beginning it's like you have 20 minutes it's not a big deal it definitely builds as it goes and you see it cutting down you know as opposed to some of the, the others um where you have a very short amount of time little short bursts like rush md or project elite something like that that's like on and off this is definitely i don't consider it frenetic because you have all that time management from the beginning I agree. It doesn't feel as frenetic. I, I don't think it feels as frenetic as uh, Escape. That's because that. there's no soundtrack, there's no soundtrack and no right. one's going, five minutes, I know. <laughs> Dong. you're That's still strange. in space. Well, you also don't have those little 30-second intervals like in Escape where you have to do something really quick. That's you know, true. it really is you have the entire 20 minutes to manage as you will. The problem with that is it's hard to gauge am I playing fast enough or not. Right. right. You don't really know until the end. You're like, oh, we weren't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So this game feels like someone played Ganshan Clever or another one of those games where if you do something here, you get a bonus over here and you do that. And they're like, how can we make that a co-op game? Right. And they we split take that it and up. Split it across right. four people, basically. Yeah. yeah. In my opinion, though, it's not split evenly. The three people who are helping the mm -hmm. spaceship are doing maybe one half of what that person's doing. Mm -hmm. If you're on the spaceship, you have to figure out the pipes to get there, figure out what bonus you're gonna take of the three, roll the dice for everybody, and when you're doing all that, at the beginning of the game, you roll the dice, you get people numbers, and then you kinda of sit back and wait. Mm. Near the end of the game, they're rolling dice, and you're like, "I, everyone, shut up! I'm trying to figure this out." I feel it, it, does, it yeah, gets it, worse. The balance slowly—it's like you're pouring sand from one end of the sand timer to the other. Absolutely. And so by the end, those other three positions are like they do something really quick, and then they're done. While that person, like you said, is managing a lot more, and the time pressure at that point—you're really mm -hmm. thinking about it. Like, I need one more thing to work. And unfortunately, as one of the three players, you might be like, there's nothing else I can give you. I'm, I'm out of the shapes, or I've already maxed out these tracks, or whichever role yeah. you're playing. So it is interesting that they have those opposite arcs, almost. You know, mm -hmm. if you're one of the three players, it starts out with, oh, God, hold on, let me see I can combo. If I do it here, then I can give you an action and you an action, and you have these great combos. But by the end, you're like, 
unless you give me a two, I can't help you, yes. you know? And so yes. they have those opposite arcs, which is really um, interesting, I think. You know, I'm not sure how I feel on it, really. It's like, it's interesting that it does have that. And I think because they're opposite, it does kind of bring a balance and kind of keeps it all in the middle because some are stressed when some aren't and it just kind of levels the whole thing out. Yes, correct. But it also means that at some point in the game, you're not going to have anything to do. Also, communication doesn't matter that much except from the polyomino one. So one person is just letting you unlock cards. They let you unlock a card. You can't be like, hey, I need a card. They're like, we know. We're working on that. The other person is letting you pull from the bag. Hey, let me pull one. I guess they can let you look and pull one or not, but I mean, it's still, that's it. The only thing is maybe the polyomino, you're like, hey, I need a T. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, I'll build you a T. That's really it. Other than that, it's just stuff being thrown at you, and then you make that work. Yeah, 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 right. That pipe connection thing, not in real time is hard. I know this because I tried to do it just for the overview and I was like, all right, let's make some, I'll do a quick pipe connection. I'll do a pipe connect. I swear I'll do a pipe connect. Okay, I got one, finally. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. hard. Those yeah. tiles are not yeah. easy to make pipe connections on. Speaking of that, I'm not a huge fan of the little red dots being how you adjust difficulty in this game. That seems kind of weird to me. I agree. And it's not time. Like, it's not time that they change. It's not like, 20 minutes is standard, 18 is difficult, 22 is easy. I could see that, you know, but the, the length of the pipe, like, if I'm efficient doing that, I might not win, like, difficult mode is be inefficient. That doesn't yeah. make sense, you know what I mean? It's like, make this pipe wind back around, even though you could have just done this, because you need to cross enough of these little red molecules. What? Like, that seems like That's a weird way to adjust difficult. Yeah. But because the pipes are so hard to do, that part never really even enters my head. I'm like, oh, I made eight. Oh, yeah, I was trying to make eight. I agree, I agree. You sort of end up doing it anyway. Yeah. I, I, this one's a hard one to come down on where I am. Some people, you know, the people who were, like, really praising the name of this game to me were comparing it to Captain Sonar. Which I just don't feel like they're really the same at all, because Captain Sonar, first of all, is a team versus a team. And I am playing against you. I'm listening to where you're moving. I'm thinking, okay, we got to move a different direction. We're shooting. There's that level of tenseness that I'm fighting somebody. Here, I'm just finishing a goal before time's over. And there's lots of games that do that. Sure. This one's just splitting it. I feel like maybe the comparison is coming from you do have different roles, and I'll use air quote roles, because you, you all have, almost have your own little mini game that you're playing for a cooperative goal. You know, and that's maybe where it comes from, but I do disagree that it's that's kind of where the comparison should end. I mean, I get it. It kind of is like one half of Sonar, a little bit, mm -hmm. meets Fuse. That's the yeah, one that kind of came out to me. Um, maybe part of that is because the dice really look like Fuse dice, and so that jumped out at me, you know, the digital dice. But that's, that's how it feels. There's a time pressure. There is that whole, you roll the dice, and then everybody goes... I need that one. Is there, can I have that one? So there's a little bit of that where I, you know, you, I might roll and go, I have a one, a two, and a five. Who wants what? Like, what do you guys need? I, I, I can take a five. Okay, five, and uh, you get the one also because I'll take the two. That kind of thing. So it felt like a combination of those two to me. It did. You're right. It definitely does feel like a King Clinko game. Yeah. Where in the, in yeah. the fuse. Or, he has a yeah. whole bunch of those games that have that same feel, or like Escape, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Although I don't feel like this has... You know what? This game is lacking excitement to me. That's what it's lacking. It's interesting. Mm. The excitement is just the time. I'm not really like, oh, I hope I roll the right thing. Oh, I hope I do this. Nah, it is kind of... So You're doing a puzzle together. So for you, it has pressure, but not excitement. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, I like that. There's pressure... Um, that's what that is. That's that's why it's not. That's why I can't give it a seven. It's a six for me. It's because the game is interesting. It's an interesting puzzle, but I felt like I was finishing a task rather than accomplishing a goal. And they're different. I did my chores. They're done. I feel satisfaction. I did my chores. I don't want to though. That's interesting. Do you think the fact that there isn't that thing that goes five minutes hurts it? I wonder. Because at some I point, like, eventually, you're yeah. just like, 
Like an alarm goes off on your phone and you go, oh, well, that was 20 minutes. We lost. Right. There's no bill to a to a loss condition. The the good part of that is you can use whatever you have on hand. You can use any timer on your cell phone or something like that. It's not right. having to have an app. It's not having to have a YouTube soundtrack or something like that. So it does make it more independent and standalone. It's not tied to something specific. And so I think that's a positive of it. But I do agree. I think it does suffer from that as well, yeah. where it needs that check-in every now and then. You know, you have to be at least this far by this point. Or, um, you know, I'll give Five Minute Marvel, for example, you know, where you hear the background every two or three minutes. And I, it's not that long. Every, like, 30 to 45 seconds, it'll be, like, one minute remaining, you know, two right. minutes. You know, there's some sort of um, audio check-in. But I think there might be some people who like those the quieter Euro games, they like to play those. Yeah. They might like this better. Mm -hmm. sure, sure. And I'm and I'm guessing that because of the number, the very specific people who told me how much they did love this, and there have been people told me that, fit in that group. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So, I don't know, what's your guys' ratings? Um, so I think I'm in that group that you, that you just described. I'm going to give it an 8. I really enjoyed this one. Mm -hmm. I think it reminded me of enough other games and parts of those games that I like. It's enough of that roll and write where I feel like I have that combo. But because I'm not comboing to my own board or to myself, it gives you that cooperative feel. It gives you that interactive feel. But at the same time, you can't win this game alone. One person can't carry the game outside of the one, not the three. You know what I mean? Yes, they, I do right. feel like they have the heaviest workload. The most experienced player should definitely play Absolutely. that. Absolutely. But it still is dependent on the other three players. You know, if one player is not working their board, they're not going to get what they need to do it. Right. And so I really like that it, um, it forces that cooperation. It forces people to do the best they can, I think. But it's also very approachable because the, the four individual roles feel different enough that, they, that you might have your favorite or it's exciting, but it's also comfortable enough. It's going to remind you of some of the roll and rides. It's going to remind you of some of the real-time games. Um, I think that there, I do wish there was a little bit more of that excitement you were talking about in it, having an app or something like that. But um, maybe that's just one of the player's roles, another more experienced one that can check in every now and then. There's something like that that I would want to implement to have those check-ins. But I very much enjoy this. I can see myself. It's 20 minutes. It's, it's a... Yeah, it's filler, co funny. right? Yeah, it's a filler, yeah. cooperative, just interesting kick game night off or wrap up a convention evening or something like that type of game. I could see it hitting the table and, and being a hit in a couple different situations. I'm coming in right between you guys at a seven, actually. Um, I can definitely see some issues. Uh, I don't like the fact that it, it it's clearly better at four. That's Very a little bit of a problem for me. Like, it's a four-player game. Otherwise, you need to start doubling up on boards. I don't like that as much. Or using the AI deck. Which using is... the AI deck. Yeah. It's a whole thing. So, right. Okay. I, don't, I don't worry about that. Um, I do wish it had an app. Even if it was optional, I can just turn a phone on 20 minutes. A little something to, again, kick up that excitement maybe. But on the flip side of that, some great things. The, the mini games are fairly straightforward. They're, they're, they're pretty easy to understand and, and figure out. There's no alpha player in this co-op. Uh, can't happen. That's true. Um, yeah, there's a few things that are really neat, and I, 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 it stands out because it is different. I can't say, oh, it's just like this other thing. No, it's like a few things. It's similar to a few, but it's its own stew, and absolutely I can see it being, a, being something that a lot of people will enjoy. So, solid game. Really fun. A seven. Well, there you go, folks. That's Mission Control. Critical Orbit, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Camilla Clegg-Gordon. I'm Z Garcia. And we're back from space. Ooh.